Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Warrenville City Council regular meeting for November 7th, 2016. May I have a roll call, please? Alderman Eschauer? Here. Alderman Berry? Here. Alderman Bevere? Here. Alderman Davalos is excused. Alderman Goodman? Here. Alderman Hoffman? Here. Alderman Widener? Here. Alderman Wilson? Here. Thank you, Emily. Would you please stand as you are able and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, every once in a while, we like to start a meeting by saying good things about good people. So we're going to do that twice tonight. We've got two proclamations for some good people. We're going to start off with our particular way of saying thank you to the school board members. And we have three of them with us tonight. Joanne Coghill, Brad Paulson, and Barb Antire. Would you come up, please, and hand those phones out to somebody so they can take pictures? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Get in close here. Yep. Yeah, I don't bite. I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to video this? No. <laughs> Just the picture. All right. Perfect. All right, we got it? Thank you. Okay, proclamation. School Board Members Day, November 15th, 2016. Whereas school board members are elected to sit in trust for their diverse communities, and in that capacity are charged with meeting the community's expectations and aspirations for the public education of their children. And whereas school board members are entrusted with the guardianship and wise expenditure of scarce tax dollars, they are responsible for maintaining and preserving the buildings, grounds, and other areas of the school district that the community has put in their trust. And whereas school board members are responsible for providing leadership that ensures a clear, shared vision of public education for their schools, that sets high standards for the education of all students and requires the effective and efficient operation of their districts. And whereas school board members adopt public policy to give voice to that leadership and employ a superintendent to administer board policy, they are also responsible for the regular monitoring of the district's performance and compliance with state policy. And whereas school board members selflessly volunteer countless hours to public service with no compensation, no compensation, except in here, right? There you go. Whereas employers are supportive of their employees who serve as school board members, generously lending support and time, employers give their employees the opportunity to better serve the needs of the school districts and citizens they represent through sometimes tremendous sacrifice to the employer. Whereas decisions made by school board members directly impact the quality of life in their communities, placing them at the front line of American democracy. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, David L. Brummel, Mayor of the City of Warrenville, proclaim November 15th, 2016 as School Board Members Day as a way to honor those citizens who devote so much of their time and energy for the education of our children. Thank you so much. Thank you. You, have, you have a moment. This is for you. Would you like, somebody would like to say something? Go ahead, do the formal present. There we go. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mayor Brummel, and it's an honor to serve on the school board and serve the students of both of our communities, uh, Wheaton and Warrenville especially. Uh, I know we've, we've really tried hard to make sure that every child gets the education that they're entitled to and that will make them become productive, wonderful citizens. And I'm looking out and see Mrs. Goodman is a product of our schools and probably some of you in the audience, and we just couldn't be prouder of our students, what they do when they get out in the, in the real world. And we're just happy, and it gives me a very good feeling. I know we don't get compensated, but we truly do, and Mayor Brummel's right, get compensated in our hearts. Because when you, when you see students, you meet them uh, you know, anywhere, uh, out, out and about, and they're respectful. Uh, we have some of the most respectful students in the world. And we have achievers who just, they go on to college and they stand in there with their peers and really do well. And we're just very, very proud of that. And, and that's what 
what you know keeps you going in times of of a, a lot of hard work and uh, and a, a lot of uh, really strong effort and time that, that is needed to put in. So it's been my pleasure to serve on the school district. It's wonderful to work with your mayor and your city. Uh, you've always been very supportive and we thank you for that. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity and this great proclamation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And the second group of nice people we have tonight. That would be you, come on up. All Christmas sharing folks, come on up. It is that time of year again. And this is a pretty impressive operation. <laughs> Don't fight now. <laughs> Somebody's gotta stand there. <laughs> come on, we can get closer to him. You know? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like it, he got it flipped around. <laughs> Are we there? We're there. All right, good. Wait, no, you can't sit down yet. <laughs> I got to do the proclamation. That's Sorry, the whole thing. I didn't get that. <laughs> 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 I'll fix that for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Proclamation Christmas Sharing 2016, whereas Christmas Sharing, which began in 1969, 47 years ago? Yes. Wow. <laughs> is a community-based organization serving families within the boundaries of Wheaton Warrenville School District 200. And whereas Christmas sharing originally serving seven families has grown over the years and served 915 families last year, of which 250 families were from Warrenville, in an effort to make Christmas a little more joyful for those in need. And as, as the economy continues to fluctuate, the need is still present in 2016. And whereas schools within Community Unit School District 200, churches in Wheaton and Warrenville, businesses and other organizations collect toys, clothing, food for distribution in December. Now therefore be it resolved that I, David Obermo, Mayor of the City of Warrenville, do hereby proclaim December 5th through the 10th, 2016 as Christmas Sharing Week in Warrenville to bring awareness that cont contributions made during this season of giving will help make the holiday season merrier for families who are less fortunate. So thank you so much for what you do oh. for you thank and you. please say something. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I'll say a I'll say maybe a little bit more than a few words because I have so much to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council, for this proclamation. I'd like to introduce Karen Binker, longtime Warrenville resident. She's the secretary of the uh, board for Christmas sharing. Denise DeCiani, See, um, Community Baptist Church Coordinator, Laura Lebo, Wellspring Alliance Coordinator, and everybody knows Fred Olaf. Fred <laughs> Okay. Okay. What I'd like to um, just say a few words about is, um, yes, this is our 47th year, and we consistently have the social workers from District 200 identify 900 or more families who could use a lot of help, especially during the Christmas season. At least a third of those families have Warrenville addresses. So we try to get as many students within the district that we can to participate in the program. The, um, we could not do this without the absolute yeoman work that our social workers at District 200 do. They're incredible people. Uh, to identify those families and make sure they get the invitations and can participate in the program. What do these people do when they do come to the eight churches that are part of the program? They get to pick out warm clothing. We may not need it right now today, but boy, in about two or three weeks, it's going to get cold out. They're going to need boots, shoes, coats, winter coats. They're going to need um, 
uh, household items. We have linens. We have uh, uh, used toys for the kids for them to pick out. We have new toys for the parents for them to pick out to make sure they get something for Christmas. We also make sure they have food. Um, our uh, churches in uh, Warrenville, they have what, either hams or turkeys that they, that they give out and gift certificates. Uh, this kind of thing is, uh, we want everybody to be able to have a holiday meal uh, when, the time is, when the time comes. Uh, what I would also like to do is, in thanking uh, District 200, I'd like to promote one more time, I did this last year, but every year there's an event called Pack the Gym. This year, it's on November 29th at Hubble Middle School. It's at seven o'clock. And what it is, it's a, a basketball game with Special Olympics kids. It's one of the greatest <laughs> basketball games. It's just so much fun to attend. But in order to get in, you gotta bring either a new toy or you have to bring a non-perishable food item. Those items are all donated to Christmas sharing. You also get a chance to participate in a 50-50 raffle. Half the proceeds from that raffle will go to Christmas sharing. This school has done so much for Christmas sharing, it's impossible to calculate the impact that it's had. But I'm so grateful for them. And it's just a continual program that we've had and again, thank you so much to the District 200. Thank you for the board, because I know you're big supporters too of this. And uh, thank you to Warrenville for being um, so supportive and recognizing all the churches, the businesses, the civic groups, um, VFW, Lions, uh, you know, a number of folks who support us also within Warrenville. Thank you. Okay, down to work. Citizens' comments. One person has signed up this evening, Mr. Bob Siebert. Bob Siebert, Albright Court. I'd like to encourage everyone to vote tomorrow. But first, there is one more fact check to reveal. The back sheet of the city's hometown happenings needs to be checked for true facts. First statement, the density will be similar to the adjacent Ray Street residence, false. Second, the new housing will generate tax revenue to recoup the 3.5 million investment the city made to purchase and remove the contamination from the property, false. Actually, the revenue generated would flow to the school district, park district, and library to fund their added costs due to the increased population. However, now enters the city of Warrenville with a TIF district, which allows the city to steal the revenue funds from the other taxing districts for 23 years and pay itself three and a half million dollars due to a very poor decision 10 years ago. Why should the taxpayers pay for the cleanup when the state's regulations require the previous property owner, even after a sale, and in a TIF owned by a municipality to pay the costs. Also, why does a developer pay only $900,000 for a property that is fully clean when the city paid $2.2 million when it was contaminated? These are developer costs property, sellers, obligations, and costs. 
but the city of Warrenville has shifted these costs to the taxpayers, trying to bail itself out of a bad decision, but creating a worse decision. Why are the Warrenville taxpayers paying three and a half million or more for a residential property development? TIFs were established back in the late 1970s to promote economic development, commercial and industrial development. That's the logic to forego 23 years of tax revenue for greater future benefits. New residential development does not lower taxes, it raises taxes for the current residents. So taxes would actually be lower for the current taxpayers if a park were built instead of high density homes. There is a financial plan to construct a park without increasing taxes. So I would encourage individuals to vote for the park. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I don't see anyone else that has signed up this evening. We'll move on to official and staff comments. I just have two this evening. One, I'm sure everyone is aware of what tomorrow is. Please exercise your civic duty and vote. Um, and then I would just add as a, um, an addendum to that, once the polls close, if you were responsible for getting signs out for candidates, it would be really nice if you picked those signs up and recycled them and didn't leave them there for the critters to get at in the wind and so on. So please clean up after the election. That would be very much appreciated by the community. Clerk. Nothing, thank you. Okay, Alderman. Alderman Goodman. Uh, first off, I wanted to remind everybody, in addition to Election Day tomorrow, uh, Veterans Day is on Friday. And uh, as we always celebrate here in Warrenville at the 11th day, the 11th hour of the 11th month, so 11 a.m. on Friday at the Veterans Day Memorial, I believe there is going to be a, a short Veterans Day service. So uh, it's not usually quite this close to Election Day, but because of the days of the week falling the way they do, it's just a couple days after Election Day this year. Um, so. Please come out uh, to our Veterans Memorial right out in front of City Hall and uh, recognize our veterans as we do annually. And secondly, I know I'm probably the five millionth person to say this, but Cubs win. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to take a moment to enjoy the championship and to acknowledge our Cubbies and how happy that's made so many millions of people, and including me um, <laughs> and my whole family. So go Cubs. <laughs> well, thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Widener. Yeah, and, um, reading the uh, <clears throat> weekly reports, um, I understand that uh, Warrenville was once again successful in receiving two grants, and I was going to ask staff if they might comment on them. I know one uh, is uh, regarding uh, Batavia Road west of 59, and the other one is a project that is uh, near and dear to my heart. The, uh, the trailhead uh, out in front received grant funding, and uh, I think there's a number of people that are very excited about that. So I was wondering if one of the staff might uh, be able to further that announcement and give us some details. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Deputy Public Works Director, Phil Kugler. Phil? Thank you. Um, yes, the last year we received uh, surface transportation program funding for the Batavia Road section. It, we applied for a reduced cost share on the city's part last year to try to obtain the money because the year before we hadn't received it. And when I checked with um, DuPage mayors and managers this year, I asked if we could re reapply to see if we would stand a chance to get the full cost share, and we were able to reapply and get it. Um, I think it was $57,000 extra funding for that project. Um, for the trailhead, we also applied for uh, service transportation program funding, which I think for that project was 75% federal cost or federal share and 25% Warrenville share, and that was for um, the construction phases of the project. So we'll still have to pay for engineering for the preliminary and final engineering, but the construction phase will be uh, cost shared at 75% federal and 25% city costs. Excellent. 
Great. Once again, uh, thanks to the staff for uh, pursuing uh, the grant opportunities and uh, again um, showing that uh, they have a high degree of success uh, when they're applying for these sorts of things when uh, the right projects are selected. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Alderman. All right. Um, we'll move on to City Administrator. <coughs> I have nothing to add tonight, thank you. Okay, City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have one item um, under the consent agenda, item 6A, the acceptance of the staff recommendation, waive second reading and pass ordinance 3041, approving acceptance of vacant land west of Route 59 north of the Illinois Prairie Path from the Tortorello family. I noticed in the ordinance that we drafted in section two, it refers to warranty deeds and I realize that at least one of the deeds that we're gonna be taking is gonna be a trust deed. So my suggestion is, uh, when that motion is made, if we could simply strike the word warranty, which occurs twice in section two of the ordinance, uh, the only impact it would have on the ordinance is the way we're accepting the property, and I know at least one of the properties, the deed is going to come out of a land trust, so it's going to be impossible to get a warranty deed. It'll be a trust deed. Uh, that would be the only change that I would uh, ask whoever's going to make uh, the motion. How would we change the motion then? Uh, just to strike the word warranty in section two of the ordinance. It occurs twice uh, in the second line and in the fourth line of section two where it says warranty deeds, if we just have- No, but I mean that for the motion, how uh, would we change the motion? Uh, just, uh, just to add and striking the term warranty. Okay. Uh, Mr. Coakley? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's not actually in the motion, but he's referring to when the motion is made, it should be changed in the ordinance so everybody else is understanding. But do we need to change the motion to reflect the change in the ordinance, or is this just a, a Scrivener's no, type no, thing? No, I, I think it needs to be changed in the motion. That's why I'm, I'm indicating this, because otherwise we're adopting the ordinance as written, which includes the word warranty. So that's why I'm indicating, Mayor, at the, at the end of uh, item 6A, if we just include the words striking the word warranty would be sufficient. Okay. Perhaps I wasn't making myself clear. I, I just don't want to be in a position where we accept the property, but it's not via a warranty deed. Okay, did you have something? Thank you. No, I'll just pull it off and um, oh. make a motion. Okay. Oh, how, okay. Okay. How, <laughs> okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> all right, good, thank you uh, for But that's that. all I have, thank you, Mayor. Okay, good, well then, um, We'll move on to the approval of the agenda for this evening. Alderman Weiner. Yes, I'd like to remove um, uh, consent agenda item A uh, so that we can uh, follow the recommendations of our attorney and uh, approve the agenda for the November 7, 2016 City Council regular meeting. Second. <clears throat> okay, with that one exception, motion and a second. Alderman Ashauer. Um, I'd like to remove 6J. J. Okay, so we have two items removed from the consent agenda, a motion or a second or agree to both of those? Yes. Okay, so we have uh, an amended agenda for this evening. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved, thank you. We need to approve a couple of sets of minutes also. Alderman Weider? I move to approve the minutes of the October 17th, 2016 City Council regular meeting and to approve the minutes of the October 17th, 2016 City Council closed session. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion of those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved, thank you. Uh, on to the consent agenda for this evening as it amended, item 6B, accept staff recommendation, waive second reading, and pass ordinance number 3042, approving an extension of the validity period of the permit approvals documented in ordinance number 2963 for the redevelopment of 29 West 701 and 29 West 719 Butterfield Road. <coughs> C, accept a uh, Deputy Public Works Director Kukler's recommendation and pass resolution number 2016-30 from the annual motor fuel tax for the maintenance of streets <clears throat> and highways by municipality as required under the Illinois Highway Code in the amount of $318,440 during city fiscal year 2017. 
D, accepts Senior Civil Engineer Hawking's recommendation and pass resolution number 2016-31 to approve the um, public improvements associated with the St. Nairn Carrie Mission Project, reduce the letter of credit, and place the project into a two-year maintenance period. E, receive and file approved minutes of the Police Pension Board special meeting and regular meeting held on August 9, 2016. F, receive and file approved minutes of the Board of Fire and Police Commission regular meeting held on August 30th, 2016. G, receive and file approved Tourism and Arts Commission regular meeting held September 5th, 2016. H, receive and file approved minutes of the Environmental Advisory Commission regular meeting held on September 20th, 2016. And I receive and file uh, <clears throat> report of invoices paid up to November 2nd, 2016 in the amount of $168,454.77. Alderman Widener. I move to approve the agenda as presented by Mayor David Brummel. Second. Motion and a second. May roll call, please. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Thank you, Emily. We will return to item 6A. Alderman Widener, did you bring that forward? Yes, I move to accept the recommendation and waive the second reading and pass ordinance 3041, approving the acceptance of vacant land west of Route 59 and north of the Illinois Prairie Path from the Tortiorelli, Tortiorello family. Um, with uh, the uh, changes in section two, striking the word warranty in um, three locations um, in section two. Uh, I think it's line two, line four, and line seven. Also in the preamble. Also in the preamble. And also in the preamble. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any discussion? Do we need a roll call for this? Yes. Yep. Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Thank you, Emily. We'll uh, now go to item 6J. Alderman Ashour, did you wish to bring that forward? I'd like to make a motion to authorize expenditures for invoices due on or before November 21st, 2016 in the amount of $183,943.41. Second. Second by Alderman Goodman. Discussion, Alderman Ashour? I'm, I will be abstain, abstaining from this vote. I have an invoice for Woodland okay. Benson here. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call again, please. Alderman Ashour abstains. Alderman Hoffman? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We have nothing under a regular agenda. No unfinished business. No new business. No closed session. We just need a motion to adjourn this evening. Alderman Widener. Move to adjourn. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned and please do vote tomorrow. Thank you.